Hello, geometry students. Today's topic is the review of the Pythagorean theorem. So the Pythagorean theorem is probably one of the most famous theorems out there, okay? And what it says is that if you have a right triangle, then the sum of the squares of the legs is equal to um, the square of the hypotenuse. So in general, we always think about it as a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a and b are the two legs of your right triangle, and c is always your hypotenuse. And again, remember, the hypotenuse is always the side across from your right angle. So again, thing to remember, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, so for the first two examples we're gonna look at. It says state of each triangle is a right triangle, okay? So you wanna check, does a squared plus b squared actually equal c squared? If it does, then the answer is yes, it's a right triangle. If it doesn't, then the answer is no. So when you're doing this, you always wanna pick c to be the longest side if you're not sure if it's right or not. So in the first example, I have a triangle with sides two, three, and four. So in this picture, which one's the longest side? The four. So that means this is my C. The other two are my A and my B. It doesn't matter which one's which. So again, I'm gonna test it. Does two squared plus three squared, does it equal four squared? So we're gonna work it out. That's why I put the little question mark there. I'm not sure if they're equal or not. So two squared is four, three squared is nine, and four squared is 16. Well, what's four plus nine? Hopefully you say 13, and realize 13 is not equal to 16. So is this a right triangle? The answer is no, because a squared plus b squared did not equal c squared. If it does, then yes, it's right. If it doesn't, then no, it's not. If I look at the second example here, we have three, the square root of six, and the square root of 15. So the first thing you wanna do is figure out which one is the longest side. Now, if you're not sure, you wanna grab a calculator. Okay, the square root of 15, if you look at it in terms of a decimal, is over three. It's like 3.8 something. Okay, the square root of six is two point something. So the longest side is the square root of 15. That's gonna be my C. So my other two sides are the A and the B in either order. So again, to see if this is a right triangle, I'm gonna check, does a squared plus b squared equal c squared? So in this problem, I'm gonna check, is three squared plus the square root of six squared, again, does that equal the square root of 15 squared? Okay, so three squared is nine. When I square the square root of six, remember that's just six, because it would be the square root of 36, which is just six. And when I square the square root of 15, it just becomes 15. So nine plus six is 15. Notice 15 is equal to 15. So since they're equal, this one, yes, it is a right triangle because a squared plus b squared did equal c squared. Now on the other types of problems we're gonna take a look at today, we are going to find the missing side of each right triangle. So they're gonna give us two sides in the right triangle, and we are going to use Pythagorean theorem to solve. So remember, we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So if I were you and you're struggling a little bit, I would first identify which one is your c. So in the first picture, remember your c is the one always across from your right angle. So in this first picture, if this is my right angle here, the side across from it is 13, so this is my C. The other two are A and B in either order. So again, if I use A squared plus B squared equals C squared, I'm gonna have five squared plus X squared equals 13 squared. And then I'm gonna work it out. Five squared is 25, X squared is still X squared, and 13 squared is 169. So again, using my math skills, I'm gonna solve for x. So I'm gonna subtract 25 from each side. So I'm gonna have x squared equals, okay, so 169 minus 25 is 144. So to solve for x, we're gonna take the square root of both sides. Okay, well, 144, remember, from the other day, is actually a perfect square. Okay, so the square root of 144 is? 12. 
So my x value here is 12. Okay, so again, we're applying the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, moving on to the next one. So again, I have a right triangle here. Let's first identify the C. The C is the one across from the right angle, so that means the 20 is the C, and the other two sides are A or B in any order. So again, according to Pythagorean theorem with this problem, I'm going to say x squared plus 10 squared equals 20 squared, and I'm going to work it out. 10 squared is 100, and 20 squared is 400. So to continue solving for x, I'm going to subtract 100 from both sides. 400 minus 100 is 300. Okay, so now to solve for x, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Now here's the kicker on this problem. 300 is not a perfect square, so we're going to have to reduce it like we did in the previous lesson. So does 300 have a factor that is a perfect square? The answer is yes. 300 is 100 times 3. So to reduce this, the square root of 100 is 10, so my answer is going to be 10 square roots of 3. So this is why we had to reduce first before we could solve our equation.